how do we conquer everything? Do we just say it? Do we just like write it on our, on our chest? Conquer, I'm a conqueror. No, there's a, there's a process to it. And we're going to get that process right from the word of God. Amen. So step number one. In Jesus, there's hope in suffering. We have to know that there's hope in suffering. Now, that doesn't sound good. Suffering, that don't sound good. Like, what, what do you mean suffering? What do you mean hope in suffering? That's exactly what it is. There's hope. You can have hope in the suffering that you go through. Let's go to the word. Romans chapter 8, verse 18, and the word of the Lord reads. Amen. Now, this is Paul writing in chapter 8, and he says, For I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy, not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. So he's saying that all the stuff that they were going through at that time, that's nothing compared to the glory that's going to be revealed to us. They were going through some stuff. Now, people think of suffering now as, you know, somebody, you know, somebody doesn't like one of your videos on Facebook. That's not suffering. You know what I'm saying? Back in that day, them folks were suffering. I mean, they were getting murdered and killed and their heads cut off for the gospel. There's people suffering like that right now. In China and in, 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 in nations that are not Christian, per se, they're getting literally killed. So now understand, the kingdom of God is completely opposite of the world system. Everything is opposite. And that's different for us to understand because we're so used to being in control of stuff because of our pride. We want to do stuff. We want to call shots. You know, we want to be able to do what we want to do when we want to do it. And if anybody tells us not to do it, then we get mad at them and cuss them out. We can't do that. <laughs> we can't do that. Well, I'll just speak for myself. I, you know, I know, I know no one here cusses anybody out <laughs> but what is what is suffering though what is suffering so the definition of suffering the state of undergoing pain distress or hardship the kingdom of God is opposite remember so if there's hope and suffering I don't understand where that comes what I don't get it so in the kingdom if you want to be first the Bible says be what Last, if you want to receive, you have to give. Uh, the kingdom is opposite. So if we're citizens of the kingdom of God, we have to learn how to operate as a citizen of the kingdom, right? So in suffering, we see that as not as pain or not as negative, but we see it as hope. So it's a complete mind change. You with me so far? Yeah. Suffering is a result of sin. We live in a fallen, broken, sinful world system. Adam and Eve disobeyed God, introduced sin into the world in the book of Genesis. You see wars, hunger, famine, crime, injustice, all kinds of stuff. That's a result of sin. We live in a fallen world. The key is when you go through it, and we will go through it, have hope that we're coming out. Yes, come on. Not in our own strength, but we know that, okay, Jesus, you overcame sin and death. So if I'm in you, I'm coming out. You're not going to stay there. Now, does it feel good? No, it doesn't. Because we walk by what? By faith and not by what? Sight. So we can't, there's a, we can't depend on how we feel. There's a difference between feeling defeated and being defeated. We're not defeated. So the truth is, we're more than conquerors, right? Jesus is undefeated. He always wins. But it feels like that sometimes. Amen. So, everybody say, Holy Ghost time machine. Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost time machine. Boom. We're going back to John chapter 16, verse 33. It's a couple of days before Jesus was going to be crucified. Everybody was in Jerusalem for the Passover. The city was hustling and bustling with people, thousands of people all over the place for the festival. And Jesus is up in the upper room with the disciples. They just finished eating the Last Supper, and it's a real intimate moment. The fire's crackling, and everybody's just sitting down, chilling. 
talking to Jesus. And Jesus is telling them when his second coming is going to be. And he's encouraging them about uh, 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 the Holy Spirit being the comforter. He had just finished washing their feet. And he was telling them about what are going to be the times of his second coming. And Jesus is telling them that they're going to be going through a lot of tribulation and suffering. So now let's go to John chapter 16, verse 33. And this is Jesus talking. And the word of the Lord reads, I have told you all this so that you may have peace. Everybody say peace. Peace. In me. Not peace in ourselves. Not peace in the world. Not peace in my money. Peace in Jesus. Here on earth. Not in heaven. Here on earth right now. You will have a few trials and sorrows. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows but take heart the king james says be of good cheer because i have overcome the world amen jesus has already overcome the world now it's interesting because he hadn't died yet he hadn't been resurrected yet but he said i have overcome the world past tense Why did he say it like that? He didn't say, I might overcome the world or I'm about to overcome the world. Why did he say, I have overcome the world? Because it's already done. You're already an overcomer. Jesus just had to walk through the process and actually do it. So if Jesus has overcome the world already, we can go through those trials and tribulations, which we will, But we have hope in that because we're coming out. So when you go through something, don't complain. Don't murmur. Don't go crazy. Don't go nuts. Does it feel good? No, it don't. But just know I'm coming out of this. I don't understand it, but Lord, I trust you. I don't understand it, but I'm going to praise you anyway. Praise God through the suffering. Praise God through the challenges. Praise God, because you're coming out. God is not going to let you die. He's not going to let you just get destroyed. You belong to him. Life in Jesus doesn't always take us above the suffering. It takes us through it. So the challenge as a Christian is not to show the world how perfect we are. The challenge is to show the world how much hope we have in Jesus while we go through it. That's a complete flip of how we feel in our flesh. Because our flesh is like, I don't want to go through this. I'm, ah, I don't want to deal with it. But we're going through for a reason. Because a lot of times, a lot of times we're going through stuff because God is preparing us for our purpose. And I just want to say this real quick. There, there's, there's a difference between suffering for Jesus' sake and the gospel Between that and suffering because you made a bad choice. I'm going to give you an example. If I go out here right now and go to all subs and rob all subs, right? And I take all the energy drinks and all the candy bars. Give it up. Give it up. And I run out of all subs, right? Thinking I got away with a lick. And I get stopped by the police and I get put in jail. I'm not suffering for the gospel. Right. Terrible life decision. I made a bad decision. So I can't say, oh, I'm going through for the gospel's sake. Oh, man, the devil is after me. And you know how we do. We always say, well, you know, the man, I'm broke, busted and disgusted, can't be trusted. The man trying to hold me down. No, that ain't the man. That's you. That's me making a dumb decision. But on the other hand, If I'm living for God, praying and and, and fasting and living for Jesus and, you know, witnessing the people at my job and loving on people and telling people the truth and living right, right, and going to church and stuff, doing, doing the things that we should do. And if someone hates me because of that and they try to persecute me by lying on me or trying to do a whole bunch of stuff, then that's suffering for the gospel's sake. That's the kind of suffering where we just say, Lord, your will be done. Bless them. 
Don't get mad. Don't get upset at God. I used to get mad at God because I used to think that I, I could earn a blessing. That's works. I used to think that, well, God, I go to church. I read the word. Where's, where's mine at? Every time somebody else will get blessed, I get jealous. That blessing ain't for me. That's for them. So anytime you see somebody else get blessed, don't get mad. Don't get upset. Just say, Lord, you know what? I thank you for my brother or sister. Encourage them because it's a heart check. We got to check our hearts. We got to watch out for pride. Our pride will jack us up. Not the devil. A lot of stuff we blame the devil for that he wish he could do. We making a bunch of mistakes on our own. We blaming on the devil and the devil sitting back eating a lot, drinking a latte talking about, I ain't even done nothing. What you blaming me for? Man, we, sometimes we're our own worst enemy, but we've overcome. Amen. Where's all the mothers at? All the mothers raise your hand. All the mothers in the house say, ow. There it is. <laughs> all the mothers. Paul said the pain of the suffering that, you, that the Romans are going through, that we're going through now, is nothing compared to the glory that we're going to receive. I don't know nothing about this part of, of your life. But remember when you were pregnant? Remember when you were in labor and you could feel that pain? I don't understand how that feels. I love y'all. I can't relate. Thank God for that. But, <laughs> but, the mother, but the mothers though, when you was in labor, you could feel that pain in your back and you knew it was time. It was painful. You were suffering. Your hair was looking all crazy. You know what I'm saying? And you had to breathe. You was in the stirrups and you had to... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And a lot of times you get mad at your husband or mad at your baby daddy or something and he, you holding his hand, you squeeze, you breaking his fingers, holding his hand, right? But then after that labor, then you hear that baby cry. And they put that baby on your chest. And you could feel his heartbeat. You could feel that warmth. He might be covered up with a whole bunch of stuff, but that's all right. <laughs> and you feel that little baby, and that little baby head kind of look up at you, and you lock eyes. You forget about all of that pain, don't you? You forget about all of that. Why? Because the suffering that you went through for that temporary time was nothing compared to the joy that you would receive when you had that baby. Amen. That's how it's going to be. So we should have hope in suffering. Thank you for joining us here at Rise Church Online. We hope today's message was impactful. Listen, we want to stay connected with you. So by clicking on the link below, you can find out how to do that. Also, by clicking on that giving link, you can help us continue to advance the kingdom of God through discipleship and outreach. Please subscribe to our channel for all new content. We'll see you next week. Thank you and God bless.